Welcome back guys. Now let's see what are the outcomes of chronic inflammation. Okay. Outcomes of chronic inflammation. Now what do you think? See continuously there is chronic inflammation going on, going on, going on. See at the end of the day, in the area of damage, see healing is happening right. So there will be scarring. So that's the one outcome. Okay, in the area of inflammation, it may be on the surface or it may be within the body. So wherever there is chronic inflammation that's happening, there will be scarring. At the end of the day, the collagen will be deposited, so scarring will be there. So that's the one outcome. Okay, it will be scarring. The second outcome is going to be amyloidosis. Secondary, amyloid deposition in the area of inflammation. Yes, amyloidosis. Usually with all the inflammatory disorders, there is a risk of amyloidosis. And Malignancy. The dangerous is the malignancy. Okay, the dangerous thing is the malignancy. For example, let me give you. See that there is chronic hepatitis. Okay, there is chronic hepatitis. Chronic hepatitis, you know, it is a liver thing, like because of the hepatitis B or hepatitis C can lead to the chronicity. Hepatitis B and hepatitis C can lead to the chronic hepatitis, right? See. With chronic hepatitis, there is a risk of liver cancer. Okay. Or with, for example, like H. pylori gastritis. Okay. So, there are two causes of chronic gastritis. What are the two causes of chronic gastritis? The one is H. pylori gastritis or the autoimmune gastritis. See, with gastritis, especially with the H. pylori gastritis, there is a risk of maltoma. There is a risk of gastric adenocarcinoma. Yes. Chronic inflammatory conditions can lead to malignancy. Here I have given you two examples. Chronic H. pylori gastritis can lead to gastric adenocarcinoma. Okay, chronic adenocarcinoma. So in this video, the main concentration is on the scarring. First, let's discuss about the scarring. So for example, imagine there is a damage or there is a wound, sir. So that should heal, right? It should heal. So into that area, more and more collagen our first granulomatous tissue will come and get deposited in that area which includes the collagen fibers okay all these things point first point is too much granulation tissue can be seen in some conditions too much granulation tissue see too much granulation tissue is called as a proud flesh okay proud flesh too much granulation tissue is called as a proud flesh for example let me show you here Say, imagine there is a there is a cut. Okay, imagine there is a surgical incision. Whenever there is a cut, see here surgical incision. Now you can very clearly see too much amount of like granulation tissue have deposited. Now it's more granulation tissue is there in that area, but within the margins in that area only. Now it's not extending towards the outer side. It's not extending beyond the margins. So such a type of scars are called as hypertrophic scars. See, let me write too much scar formation. So too much scar formation, it can be of two types. One is hypertrophic scar. Okay, one is hypertrophic scar as well as keloid. So what is the difference between a hypertrophic scar as well as a keloid? See, in hypertrophic scars, there is no extension beyond the margins. Okay, there is no extension of the granulation tissue. There is no too much tissue beyond the margins. But if I show you, for example, see, this is a hypertrophic scar. Okay, so there is an incision. The scar is forming, but it's a little bit more extra. Okay, that's hypertrophic scar. But if you look here, now it's extending beyond the margins. The granulation tissue or the scar formation is more too much. So they are called as the keloids. Okay, so now... In your exam, the question they will ask you is, so keloid means it's a scar, as the scar tissue extends beyond margins. Okay, so what is the most common site? The most common site is the sternum. For keloid, the most common site is the sternum. Now, what is the treatment for such keloids? Hypertrophic scars are okay. Okay, but the keloids they are cosmetically not good okay they are not looking good right so what is the treatment for keloid 
it is intralesional means within the lesion within to the into the steroid into the uh, keloid you are going to inject certain things that is intra lesional tramsinolone injection of tramsinolone so intra lesional injection of the tramsinolone is the treatment which is done for the keloids okay now after this the next topic which i want to discuss you know it okay too much amount of like you know, scar tissue one is the hypertrophic scar other is the keloid now the next point which i want you to know is wound healing so wound healing occurs by how many ways there are two ways one is the primary intention other is secondary intention so wound healing by primary intention and secondary intention so what exactly the primary intention of wound healing and the secondary intention of wound healing for example now if i am giving a incision okay i am doing some surgery and i am giving the incision so it's going to be perfectly clean incision it is ster it is absolutely sterile there is no septic or there is no dirt material or there is no microbiological material it's absolutely sterile cut so such cuts are going to heal edge to edge by primary intention there is no too much amount of tissue deposition granulation tissue deposition so primary intention means clean cuts okay clean cuts are sterile cuts clean cuts are sterile cuts they will heal by primary intention for example i am going on a bicycle or on the motorcycle now i had a small fall or accident now i am having a big trauma which is totally with the dirt it is totally uneven the wound whatever is there it's totally uneven so such wounds will also heal such wounds will also heal but it's not by primary intention it's by secondary intention so trauma the wounds which are dirty dirty wounds okay are irregular cuts so such wounds are going to heal with too much amount of scar deposition okay too much amount of scar tissue is going to be deposited so more scar tissue but here less scar tissue is going to be seen in primary intention so that's the differences between primary as well as secondary intention primary intention is a doctor's cut secondary intention is a fall or accident which is going to be the injury now the next thing which i want to know is the wound contraction see now imagine there is a cut okay the surgical cut okay now there are two edges right there are two edges now there is a cut there are two edges now these two edges they have to approximate the two edges have to approximate so that the wound will be closed so this approximation the two edges should have to bring together that approximation is done with the help of which cells that's the question asked the wound is going to be closed the wound have to be closed with the help of which cells that is myofibroblasts In the name itself, it's there. Fibroblast for scar formation, myo for contraction, wound contraction. So wound contraction is done with the help of cells called as myo fibroblasts. Okay, myo fibroblasts. So events of wound healing. Next topic is events of wound healing. Now. First, what is going to happen? Granulation tissue will be deposited in that area, in the area of the wound. For example, you have to fill it. There is a empty space, right? You have to fill it. Okay. Now, granulation tissue should be deposited. So now, my question is, what exactly is the granulation tissue? What is it? What exactly is the granulation tissue? Granulation tissue is nothing but to that area, more and more blood vessels will be coming. So, blood vessels, small, small blood vessels will come into that area. Blood vessels will be there in the granulation tissue. fibroblasts and inflammatory cells okay inflammatory cells so blood vessels fibroblast and inflammatory cells these three are present in the granulation tissue now granulation begins on which day of injury okay for example there is a wound now you it have to close it have to close for example there is a surgical wound or some irregular cut also doesn't matter now when you will see the granulation tissue getting deposited granulation tissue begins by on which day third day next collagen deposition begins by 
the fibroblasts have to deposit the collagen right to fill that area of the gap so collagen deposition begins collagen deposition begins also on the third day okay by third day collagen deposition starts but the point which i want you to know is so the collagen whatever is getting deposited what type of collagen it is it is a type 3 collagen okay it's a type 3 collagen in granulation tissue very important mcq in granulation tissue which type of collagen is present type 3 collagen next maximum granulation tissue granulation tissue begins by third day okay but maximum amount of total granulation tissue will be seen on which day maximum granulation tissue maximum granulation tissue is seen by day 5 by fifth day maximum granulation tissue is produced okay begins on third day maximum granulation tissue is seen on the day 5 next maximum neovascularization means the blood vessels have to come to that area okay so maximum neovascularization is seen also on the day 5th so day 5th maximum neovascularization maximum granulation tissue begins on third day next maximum collagen deposition maximum collagen is deposited on day 21 after the wound okay after having a wound by 21 days maximum collagen is going to be deposited now my point is see with the time with the time whatever the collagen that is there in the granulation tissue whatever the collagen that is there in the granulation tissue that will be converted into type 1 collagen which is more stronger so this collagen is type 1 so initially it is type 3 but it later it will be converted to type 1 collagen okay so that's also which is important next wound healing is promoted by so wound healing it is promoted by so which factors will help in the wound healing process it is vitamin c very important it's a vitamin c vitamin c why because vitamin c is very much important for the collagen okay vitamin c as well as for zinc so zinc and collagen sorry zinc and vitamin c are very much important for the process of wound healing but wound healing is delayed by if they ask you delayed so what might be the reasons the wound healing is getting delayed simple vitamin c deficiency or zinc deficiency okay vitamin c or zinc deficiency can lead to that or systemic disorders like diabetes mellitus Okay, these are the microangiopathies, microvascular, like you know, problems where the blood supply is not going to be properly there to the wound, so that healing will be delayed. So diabetes mellitus or seen steroid users. Okay, steroid users. Now, why in steroid users? You know, it's steroids are immunosuppressants. They are anti-inflammatory. They are immunosuppressants. Immunosuppression. Okay, so without proper immune cells or proper inflammatory cells, the wound healing is not going to occur. As simple as that. So, in the wound healing topic, the points which I want you to know is see, hypertrophic scar as well as skeloid, image based questions. If you have a big irregular tissue that's getting, like you know, the granulation tissue that's getting deposited, that is keloid. The most common site of the keloid is sternum. What is the treatment for the keloid? Intra lesional injection of tramsin alone. Okay, next. What are the two, what are the three outcomes of the chronic inflammation? Scarring, amyloidosis, and malignancy. Next, what else I want you to know? Maximum collagen deposition. Maximum collagen deposition is always day 21. What type of collagen? It's a type 1 collagen. But the beginning, beginning collagen is type 3. Maximum granulation tissue is seen on. Maximum granulation tissue is seen on day 5. But granulation tissue beginning is seen on day 3. Granulation tissue begins by day 3. Maximum granulation tissue is on day 5. Maximum neovascularization is also on day 5. But maximum collagen is on day 21. So with this, we have completed the topic of wound healing also hope the video is helpful thank you